John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Thank you, choir. Thank you for the singing. Thank you for the songs. Uh, Yes, sir, they did. Great job, great job. Mr. Britt, would you get me a bottle of water, please? Leave it to Marie to always be prepared. Thank you, Marie. Today's message, I'll, I'll try to make it as quick as I can. And I want you to just be, pay attention just for a few minutes. I want to, to go down the road uh, today. I want to go down a, ray, uh, a way. I, growing up, I loved going to see Georgia Bulldogs play football. And I, and I love to go and sit in these stands and just see these guys play football. I went to, uh, I've been to Athens. I've been to uh, Tennessee. Tennessee's a great stadium to go to. But you know the one thing that is wrong with being in the stands? You really don't have an impact on the field. I, mean, I know that, that uh, the, the crowd uh, momentum and the mo momentum sometimes can turn the players to get excited and to, to go play their best. But unless you have the ball or unless you're on the field as a part of the team, you really are not really part of the team. You're just a fan sitting in the stands being entertained and hoping that your team will win uh, the game. So I want to talk today. I just want to just focus in on a little bit. At verse 12, it says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have of the, the light of life. So I ask you today, the title of the message is, Are you in the stands or are you on the field? Are you following Jesus with everything that you are and everything that you have? Are you just coming to church to be entertained? Are you coming just to, to uh, see what else is new, see what else is going on? You know, we come to church not to go out into the world to learn to be good because you can be good and not be saved, okay? But there is nothing in us, there is no good in us that will get us to heaven. The only way that we can go to heaven is through Jesus Christ, and he is the only way. There's no interstates that can go from uh, here to there or there to here. There's one way, and only one way, and that way is through the cross. From the manger to the cross, from the cross to the grave, and three days later that grave was empty. I was listening to a song this morning. I was uh, preparing this message, and, and I was uh, just thinking about next week and what, praying about what God would have me to preach next week, and, and a song uh, came to my mind. If you knew him like I know him, you would know that he's alive. I walk by, it says, I walk by the tomb of Buddha. Looked inside, I saw his bones. Traveled on to the tomb of Muhammad. Still wrapped up in his grave clothes. Then I journeyed to a garden where Joseph let him lay. The Lamb of God, God's own begotten, is no longer in that grave. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, I want to follow him. If you knew him like I know him, I'm 
sure you could, most of you could say the same thing. But can I tell you, if Jesus Christ hadn't changed your life and he hasn't made a way in you and he has not made you a new creation, the way is eternal separation. Hey, this is serious stuff. I cry out to you, I beg you, I urge you to let the Holy Spirit, let the Word of God uh, get into your life. And, and, and judge your heart or, or uh, let your heart see where you're at. Because can I tell you, there's, there's many of us that can go around and judge one another. But there's only one God that knows the heart. He knows the situation. He knows where you're at. He knows where you need to be. And he is the only way that can save you. So I ask you this morning, are you in the stands? Or are you on the field? John chapter 12, 12 through 18 says, The next day we are celebrating today, this is Palm Sunday, we are celebrating the uh, feast that uh, it, it, I remember going to Honduras and leaving Honduras uh, around Easter. The, the Everything was shut down except for the airport we was able to get out. But they would line the streets and get ready and they would bring all these palm fronds and everything on the street and they would celebrate Palm Sunday like no one else I've ever seen before. But I can picture this going on. In John chapter 12, it says, The next day a great multitude that had come to the feast when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him and cried out, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, the King of Israel. The G- then Jesus, when he had found a young donkey, sat on it as it, wa- at it as it is written. Fear not, daughter, daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's coat. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things were written about him and that they had done these things to him. Therefore, the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of his tomb and raised him from the dead bore witness. For this reason, the people also met him because they heard that he had done these signs. Are you in the stands or are you on the field? You notice that this great feast, you can see this. Uh, it says a great multitude lined the streets and, and we can see that they put all these palm fronds out and as Jesus was coming down, a lady on, riding a donkey, riding a young colt, they said, Hosanna, 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 blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But they wasn't coming to really see Jesus. They was coming to see the sign. Notice in in the book of John, it tells us, it it gives us seven miracles that Jesus um, performed in the book of John. The wedding feast. Uh, He changed the water into wine. The bread, the the feeding of the 5,000. Many others, but the people were still hanging on to the entertainment. They were looking for the signs. I want you to notice something else. We'll move to John chapter 19, verse 14 through 18. It says, now it was the preparation day of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, behold, your king. Notice this. But they cried out away with him. I want you to look at this. The same people the, the day before was crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the king, blessed be the name of the Lord. Is the same people that are saying, Away with him. Oh, you can come to church, and, and I'm I'm thankful that you're here. But I I can honestly tell you that when I was asked when this church, when 
when they called me to be pastor, when I was asked, what is your plan about uh, bringing people here? That's not my priority. I have nothing to do with that. I'm praying for God to bring people here that God wants here. And if you are one of them, praise God for that. But if God has you somewhere else, praise God for that too. Because we it's not about Mulberry Baptist Church. It's not about uh, other churches in the area. It's about the big C church. It's about Christ and only Christ. Growth in numbers is not my priority. Spiritual growth is my heart. I want you to learn the Bible. I want the Bible to learn you. I want the Bible to change your life. I want God to change your life. I want 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to be real to you. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Growth is not my, my passion. Because the multitudes, you see what the multitudes did. The multitudes came and cried out, Hosanna. Then they said in verse 14, Now it was the preparation day of the Passover. And about the sixth hour, and he said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him. Away with him. Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and led him away. And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of his, of his school, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, on uh, one on the other side and Jesus in the center. Think about this analogy real quick. I've been, uh, don't, let, don't let me lose you. I've been a Braves fan and a Georgia fan for a long time. I have been let down a lot. And I can sit and cheer for those guys and then walk away aggravated because they didn't do what I wanted them to do. Can I tell you, Jesus will never fail you. Never. So are you really coming to church? Are you really uh, doing things of Christ because of the excitement? Are you doing it because of the reward? Let me tell you what the reward is. If Jesus Christ has changed you and made you new and has, has saved you from your sin, can I tell you that Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Romans 5.8, But God commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can I tell you there's nothing that you can do Mr. Dana uh, read it a minute ago in the, in the choir production, Ephesians 2, 8, 9. There is nothing that we can do to earn salvation. What did I say before? Jesus is the only way, the only truth, the only life. No man comes to the Father but by me, as Jesus said. There is nothing. I don't care how good you are, how good you think you are, your goods your righteous deeds that you think you were doing as a, are as filthy rags as what the Bible says. Can I tell you, we are all sinners. Even this preacher. That scripture says all. And that scripture means all. If you die in your sin, there is eternal separation. And I believe my Bible says, my Bible's right here, that there's a great divide, and that's a place called hell. And it says where, I think it says it's gnashing your teeth. A 
place of total separation. Who is it separated from? From God. Why are you separated from God? Because God did not change your life. For all have sinned. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Can I tell you, if you are in that place and the Holy Spirit are dealing with you today, God's the only one that can save you. Listen, we're not here to, to judge you if you're here. We're here to show you the truth. John 8, 32, uh, 32 says, The truth shall sh- set you free. But can I tell you, if Jesus Christ has changed your life, and he has made you new, your reward is heaven forever, eternally with Jesus Christ. But can I tell you, while we are waiting, while we are here waiting for Christ's return, let us not be a church that is sitting here and enjoying the entertainment, and then when we leave, we are living the same way we were when we come in here. Hey, it's not to come here and to go out and just to be good. This is a hospital. This is where we come to find hope, where we come to find help, where we come to find fellowship with one another. To build each other up. Proverbs says iron sharpens iron. We don't come here just to leave to be good. We come here to leave to be different. And to be changed. Ephesians 6 says uh, we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against principalities. Therefore, put on the full armor of God. Just like those guys that, that play in football and, and all this other sports that they put on this equipment, this protective equipment. The Word of God is everything you need to do, everything that Christ wants you to do. Put on your helmet. Take up your sword. What does uh, Hebrews 4.12 say? The Word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even the dividing asunder. And as a discerner of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. So I encourage you this morning. We're going to wrap it up right here. I encourage you this morning. Come on, Mr. Dana, Miss Angela. Let's do a little invitation. I encourage you this morning. To pick up the helmet of salvation. If Jesus Christ has changed you and made you new, you already have the helmet of salvation. Because he has saved you. He has made you new. But can I tell you, since Jesus has made you new, what does the the rest of the verse say in John 8, 12? It says, if you're following me, you shall not walk in in darkness. Miss Melissa, you pull that up for me. John 8, 12. Jesus said unto them, I get it. 8, 12 says, Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of the world of, of life. Can I tell you if Jesus Christ has changed your life? This verse says you shall not walk in darkness. You cannot be in the world, be of the world, and be uh, okay with yourself. The Holy Spirit's going to be dealing with you and saying, "Ah, uh-uh, you ain't supposed to be doing that because you're you're of you're of Jesus. Jesus is your Lord and your Savior." You shouldn't be there. You shouldn't be watching that program on TV. Hey, I'm I'm there. I'm with you. Why do you think that that, uh, these sermons are like this? Because they're dealing with me first. You 
shall not walk in darkness. It tells us to be in the world, but not of the world. Go out and among them and be ye separate. You know what that word means? What I just said a minute ago. We're not here to go out to be good. We're to go out to be different. Because the word of God has changed us and made us new. I urge you, I beg you to quit sitting in the stands and start playing on the field. Start following Jesus with all that you are. The Bible says, love, your, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And what is that? Love your neighbor as yourself. I'm not sure some of us really love ourselves that much. But can I tell you, if Jesus Christ has changed you, he has not saved you just to sit in the stands. He has saved you so that he can make a difference in you and through you. Can I tell you, if you are sitting here today and the Holy Spirit is dealing with you and you don't know where you spend eternity, you may die today. James says that life is a vapor. Don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow is going to worry about itself. You don't know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior. There's many guys in here that would love to walk you through the gospel, take you through the gospel. But can I tell you, you don't need us. You only need Jesus. Let Jesus change your life. I'm not going to say it's going to be a bed of roses, but it would be better with Jesus and God than it will by, be by yourself. Even through the valley, God is good. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I can tell you that because I have seen it. If God is, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you today, the altar is open. If there's something that you need to deal with this morning, the altar's open. I urge you to come down and pray. Pray, God, I want to be different. I want to be changed. So the world will see you, not me. Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you for the songs that the choir sing. We thank you for the word, God. Lord, we see the example of the, the multitude that cried out, Hosanna. And then the next week said, crucify him. Crucify him. There's no king but Caesar, God. Lord, I stand today and I praise you and thank you and honor you because you have changed me. You have made me new. You have given me life. God, I am no longer separated from you because you're adversary. But I am made whole because of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray if there is anybody here today that is lost and doesn't know Jesus, I pray that you would deal with their heart and let them see that they need you. God, if there's anyone here that is, is going through a struggle, God, if there's anyone here that are, is just sitting in the stands and just biding the time for your return, God, I pray that we buckle our bootstraps and put on our helmet and take our short sword of, the, of the, the, the Spirit. Take your word and go out into the world and be different, God. Not for us, not for the people to see us, but for the people to see you, God. Lord, I thank you for loving us. I thank you for dying for us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. The altar's open.